So this is of the top 100 films in 2022. Uh, 44 of them depicted a girl or a woman as a lead or co-lead of those 44 films. 19 of them had a female lead or co-lead from an underrepresented racial ethnic group. Obviously, up for debate what underrepresented means in their mind. Does that mean just pure demographic? Does that mean some other social construct? We have no idea. Uh, well, if five... I weren't underrepresented, then it couldn't be a small number. So therefore, it must be a small number in order to fit into that category. I guess. Five had a female <laughs> lead or co-lead 45 years of age or older. They even managed to work in ageism into this report uh, because the women, they're, they're not hiring enough women my age or older, I, I guess. I, I don't know. Um Genre gaps. Now, I found this interesting script. Uh, mm -hmm. Action, animation, comedy. The highest representation in comedy. What What is the most popular film kind of film for women to go see in theaters? Romantic comedy. I, there you go. So it's like you would think that this kind of like makes sense from the market standpoint. Does it not? Yes, it does, actually. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like this report makes no sense to me. It's the goofiest thing. Um, but then here, here's here's where they kind of dig down into this. Limited progress for protagonists of color in film. Again, this is all based on the top grossing films. Not all films, just the top mm -hmm. grossing films. Um, you know, and, and they go year by year here. The number of leads uh, underrepresented mm -hmm. as you are. Um, you can see here, inclusion of racial and ethnic groups. Now, this is what got me. Inclusion of racial ethnic groups on screen in 2022. White, 61.7%. Black, 13.4%. That's literally almost exactly the demographic breakdown in the United States. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. I'm it's also like, wondering, what the heck is that other? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I it guess uh, be, Middle Eastern. It could be, bi, it could be biracial. Biracial, okay. Middle Eastern. Could or be biracial. There's also overlap. All Latinos are not white. All Latinos are not mestizo. My background, Afro-Latino. Where's that in here? I don't well, see other, it. Other is probably well, like Native that, American and all these other. That's yeah. where it, it could be. Because if it is going to be like the whole people who I don't, don't identify as human or don't identify as having any type of chromosomes, that would frighten me. Because, again, how do you put that into a movie? Here's the other thing, though. Look look further down the list now. We could definitely make the argument that if anything is underrepresented here, probably Hispanic Latino, 5.2%, mm -hmm. right? Because that's, that's nearly what, 17 to 20%, depending on the measurement of the population now, at least as by estimates. You can pull up the U.S. Census data and you can see it. Asian at 15.9. Anybody want to take a guess? I think I know why that's the case. Does anyone want to take a guess why Asian is so overrepresented? Well, China. Boom! That's oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was the biggest Hollywood is appealing uh, to a big money market. me off <laughs> between 2014 and 2019 is every exact thing. Well, how do we market this to China? China's mm -hmm. not giving you money. Like that was my always claim. They're not giving you money. They, they don't do that. Why do you want to appeal to them? Well, they got a billion plus people population. Yeah. And, but, and on the Hispanic Latino side, sorry, script, I, I cut you off un ahead. unintentionally, but on the Hispanic Latino side, part of that lower percentage is because much of your Hispanic Latino audience is watching Spanish uh, specific movies that would not be registered in this. So it's not as if they're not That's watching correct. content that features you know, Hispanic Latino actors. It's and that you're, goes you're back to our market categories. definition point. Even yeah, exactly. though this is a ridiculously unrepresentative sample, and it in fact inverts cause and effect, but you're not con you're, you're completely ignoring entire markets and entire categories of content that are specialized and which serve these markets and which probably underrepresent in their own ways, uh, you know, ethnic, other ethnic groups. And by, and by the way, what, I mean, one of the things we're really not dealing with here is not all minorities want to see all other minorities in movies. This is not like oh, the white people or the Jews who run the studios, supposedly. And they kind of do, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not getting any action. They built that. Hollywood. Why not run it? I mean, that's what that's the origin, <laughs> <laughs> right? But the it's not it's not as as if these forces these market forces are just a, a matter of the majority or the or the or, or the controlling ethnic group keeping people down there isn't necessarily mutual love among all ethnic groups who are minorities and and, th and that's one of the big lies of the entire equity and diversity um scam 
Well, it's 100% true what you're saying, Ron. There's some kind of, like, for example, there's this whole mystique out there about a so-called black and brown alliance. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen black people be racist towards Latinos. I've seen Latinos be racist towards how black about, people. How about black, black um, on Asian violence? That's the other thing, too. You have black on Asian violence. You have that that's going on. You also have Asian discrimination against blacks. Not all minorities are united. And then, of course, you have ones that are recent immigrants to the country. Some of them are much more prejudiced towards all the other ethnic groups that are that are here. So there isn't this unity that's uh, that's out there. Also, by the way, Asians uh, having litigated the issue of Asian identity up to the Supreme Court in the in the slants trademark case, the free speech case. Most of the world is Asia. A what the hell is Asian? Yeah, yeah. What the hell is Asian? You have Bollywood. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Producing massive amounts of content that's you've true. got an entire east asian um uh, studio system producing content for east for, uh, in various east asian countries it's a preposterously facile analysis mm -hmm. well you know and that's it's somebody actually just super chatted pretty much exactly what i was going to say here and and it's a great point let me just go ahead and bring it up uh if i can get my cursor over here um, day tripper for twenty dollars, or uh, yeah, uh, twenty Argentinian, uh, or two hundred Argentinian, twenty dollars here. Sorry, I don't need my culture, Argentinian Italian, to be represented in American movies. If I want to see my countries represented, I watch content from my countries. I just want good movies, good TV, good stories. What I was going to say was perfectly goes into this, and thank you for the super chat. Is that think about the biggest movies that American studios produce. And again, this is basically a Hollywood survey. This is USC is about as Hollywood as it gets in terms mm -hmm. of mentality. Um, USC feeds a lot of Hollywood jobs, okay? Um, what do they watch in China? Did Shang-Chi and Mulan do gangbusters in China? No. You. They hated <laughs> it. They freaking hated it. They looked Please. at it like it was a joke. What goes well in China? Fast and the Furious. Mission Impossible does well over there. Um, Godzilla versus Kong. Spider-Man do well over there? Spider-Man did well over there. Yeah. Big, not white per se, but big, robust American gangbuster action films. That's what they want. They don't want America to make a Chinese film to sell to them. That's like a joke. And that's not just them. And I think this is the point of what Day Trip is bringing up here. Um, and this kind of survey and study to what Scripps said, I think perfectly was this, it, it just goes to prove why what they've been doing doesn't work. It's, it, and that's kind of the point. They're so lost. They're so, uh, 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 just beholden to this idea that they keep have to, they, they, they keep have to inject this stuff without any thought to the audience. Cause at the end of the day, they're still in the money-making business. You've got to sell this to a general audience. And I've always hated the argument that people need to feel represented on screen based on their skin color and their race or their ethnicity or whatever. Cause it's like, well, if that's your mentality, then does not the door swing both ways. If you start eliminating, you know, if you want to say, well, we're going to get rid of more and more white characters on screen and replace them with a diverse cast. Great. But your argument says that people want to be represented if white people are still 60 plus percent of your audience in America, that might cause a problem for you when the, when when people start going to theaters, right? I mean, I don't believe in the theory that people just want to see their ethnic uh, heritage represented on screen. That's the biggest thing to them. I think that's crap. I think people don't care. I think people just want to see a good movie and a good story and enjoy themselves. Um, but you also risk diluting your audience through the rep through massive um, over representation. The fact of the matter is, is that. Um, one aspect of Hollywood, especially um, with regards to marketing, is you want to have a very accessible film. Mm -hmm. And you, the more accessible it is means more high concept it is. And you don't get that when you start to oversaturate it and, and blend various different cultures into one pot for a film. One of the things that audiences like are is curiosity. They want to see something new, fresh, and different. If you keep on giving me, keep on issuing out movies that have – uh, mathematically equal representation of all sorts of characters, you don't have variety anymore. 
And as a result, you get stale and audiences get bored. And what do they do? Well, they'll lean back to things that appeal to them more. It won't be stuff that is 100% culturally the same of what, who they are. It's going to be the stuff that is like, hey, I've never seen this culture before. And it seems like it's a fun movie. Oh, wait, I can relate to that because, you know, sometimes parents across all cultures have a lot of same mentality when it comes to how they want to treat their kids. That is a unifying aspect. But when you dilute it, you you break apart that unifying aspect and you just say, well, it's all we're all the same deep down. It doesn't even matter that we have similarities because we're all all the same. The variety that, you know, in, it ignites our um, our curiosity that gives us the spice of life that makes it worth living ends up becoming washed away because they want to basically just balance it out and make it gray and bland instead of you know highlighting little key points of various different cultures in interesting fun ways that allow us to connect with them but not necessarily have to be them 